Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul, where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination, providing that they pay with the in-stream currency Struts, which they earn by watching. We begin by trying to bring some Kerbals back home, or at least uh, get them on the path back home from Mars, and that is because we have a lot of Kerbals around Mars and I would like to not resupply all of them. So these are the three Kerbals who landed on the surface of Mars and then barely got back into orbit and rendezvoused with a starship, that starship having a lot of supplies, but not actually meant to bring them back home. So we do have a Mars return vessel for them to use, and we undock their little lander craft after refueling it using the starship. Starship has plenty of methane and oxygen, the lander craft uses methane and oxygen as well, so we top it off, and we send it on its way to rendezvous with the return vessel. So this is what we're doing here after undocking, making sure that we have the supplies they need for the transfer. But it's not going to be a long transfer because orbits around Mars are not that long, thankfully. So here, uh, using the little ED-1 and then getting their rendezvous as you can see there. So this is the return vessel that they are approaching. It will use ion engines. It used a nuclear engine to get here, but its fuel has boiled off, so it can only use the ion engines to get back home. And it has substantial delta V. The problem is that delta V, well, it's, the burn time is not reading correct there, but its delta V still takes a lot of time to apply. Uh, many days. Thankfully, we can time warp while using these particular ion engines. I configured them using the module from KSP Interstellar, so. As you can see, as long as we have SAS on, we can time warp and still have them at full throttle. But it takes a lot of orbits to push this out into interplanetary space. And the delta V doesn't read right. You saw it reading like 4,000 there. That's not right. Every time we have to replot it to see what the actual number is. So eventually we get pretty far out. And of course, we get to the orbit where we are actually going to depart Mars SOI. And so this is the final burn right here. Now the thing is, doing this over the course of multiple orbits and so inaccurately means of course we're using much more delta V than the initial advertised instantaneous maneuver delta V. And so we have to plan for that. We also have to plan for capture around Earth because we're not going to have many days and many orbits in order to capture around Earth. So we have to make sure that our approach eventually is light enough, if you will, and not that much of a gap between Earth orbit and our orbit as we approach so that we can do the capture burn without any trouble. So that's gonna be one trick. Anyway, uh, on to something completely different. I look for supplies, basically, in our Mars vessels. And we send some over, but because Starship doesn't have enough Delta V to rendezvous with anything, we need to figure out how to get the stuff from Starship to the other vessels. So you can see the array of other vessels we have around Mars, uh, Mars Vessel 1, Mars Vessel 2, the NTP-2 ship, all of these ships with tourists. And so we need to deal with that and send some more supplies over, basically. So I decided to make sort of a recovery pod for just the engines of Starship. Uh, instead of launching a full Starship, I just wanted to get the engines back and then we'll just have a tank that we dump. So we'll expend the tank, but we'll get back the engines. I just wanted to consider this possibility here. And so that is the recovery pod with my Pac-Man encapsulation device to keep them all safe as they come back down. And of course the heat shield, parachutes, and the RCS is built into the Pac-Man device as is the control core. We have a nuclear stage there, so it's a super heavy, which means immense lag <laughs> because of all the engines. And then uh, a small tank that is standing in for the Starship, and of course we've got the recovery section and then a nuclear engine at the top. And so that's a 930 second ISP uh, sort of deal. Not necessarily the best setup because after all, a Super Heavy, we're going to reserve fuel in Super Heavy for his return. Uh, Super Heavy, if you're reserving fuel, it carries, you know, assuming Starship, let's say, uh, 100 tons to orbit, right? And that's not a lot to get stuff all the way out to Mars. Now we're using the nuclear engine to help for the transfer, but still not the biggest 
transferred cap capacity to Mars that we could hope for. Anyway, we uh, get a hitch here. Uh, literally, I think there was a staging error. So the upper stage got caught there. And I tried to do something about that. I decided that, that was what I needed to separate there. And I did. But that ended up causing more problems. So we had to relaunch this thing. So as I revert and relaunch, I should note that this is a sandbox save. The struggle is really about supplies, uh, not funds, because this is in career mode. And so when there are issues, I do feel free to revert. If our Kerbals die because they didn't get any food, water, and oxygen, there's no reverting that will save that situation. So that is the main struggle here. We've got many Kerbals deployed and much food, water, and oxygen to send. Hopefully we'll get down to actually producing some of this stuff in C2, but it's, it's harder than you might think in real solar system. So, yep, it's not quite like the stock solar system. Okay, and not that the stock solar system you can get food, water, and oxygen because that isn't actually... Well, anyway, that's complicated. That's all. A whole bunch of mods could be used in that situation. The important thing here right now is that our Super Heavy did separate and we continue to go on our way. And here it is reaching orbit with substantial margin. So there we go. And on this occasion I actually brought it to orbit and so we have to deorbit the engine section. Not very hard. And here it is coming into the atmosphere and orienting with the Pac-Man device shrouding the little engines. And coming through re-entry. It is a little bit of an awkward pod, but hopefully okay. Parachute deployment. So surprised at how small the parachutes look compared to the to the little recovery pod, but anyway, splash down. And a little bit of a hop there. Anyway, we will recover it. And we continue with the mission. So, of course, we want to separate off the spent tank. Unfortunately, that got left in orbit. But here is the burn to head to Mars using the nuclear engine. Unfortunately, the nuclear engine was not sufficient. And we had Briz engines on the payload. And so they had to complete the burn. You can see all seven firing there. And we had to do a correction. Unfortunately, the transfer window was not particularly a good one. It costed a lot of Delta V in order to do the transfer, much more than I expected. So that's why we had to compensate with the Briz stage. Anyway, the problem with that is that we didn't end up with enough Delta V to do the capture around Mars and then, of course, a rendezvous. So I decided to dump water because if we check TAC life support there, we can see we have a lot of water at the Fulbian portal, which is mainly what we want to resupply here. And eventually I will want to get everything, all the Kerbals around Mars together at the Fulbian portal will be my goal. So that'll simplify supplying all of them because they're all in separate ships right now. So anyway, we didn't really have that much Delta V. I dumped some water in order to compensate. And I decided to send another one. This time, instead of using the Briz engines on the payload, I decided to use the infamous Raider Nick Special. This is the five propellant engine that runs on pentaborane, uh, lithium fluoride, liquid ammonia, liquid fluorine, and beryllium fluoride. Uh, the lithium fluoride and beryllium fluoride are, I guess, meant to stabilize the liquid fluorine or something like that. Anyway, it's not as high ISP as the liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen mix, but it is denser, which is about all I can say for it, really. Um, so, yeah, it does have higher ISP than the Briz engines, at least, but these engines only have five ignitions, so that is the downside. Anyway, so that stage we did not bring to orbit this time, so it would deorbit naturally, and so... We don't follow that down because I've demonstrated that it can do it, so we're not going to belabor that point. And here we are with the nuclear stage doing the completion of orbit, and then we'll do the transfer burn. 
This is a weird transfer opportunity and basically we're using MechJeb to plot the transfer and it's building in some of the inclination correction into this burn and that's why we're sort of in this weird situation and a weird situation because I didn't notice that we were entering the atmosphere so I had to point away from the maneuver node in order to save us so that we didn't burn up. We did get saved and I had to do a little bit more with those Raider Nick specials and that was a bad thing. So we've got these pentaborine flames but, and that's all very good but we're way high up, way inaccurate and we wasted a lot of fuel. So I just decided this was a day of reverting and I was very depressed by that let me tell you. So yep I was fed up so I decided to go with the Attila thruster that wonderful powerful engine with its huge nuclear reactors and generators attached to it and I also decided to make an upper stage with Vulcane 2 engines this time instead of Raptors and that's because Vulcane 2 actually has a fairly good thrust to weight ratio intrinsically and it's not that bad in vacuum actually so yep I went with my Kasei rocket, which is also hydrogen and oxygen, but put two Raptor 9 boosters on the side. So that is what we have. I decided to go with that because of the worm logo, I think. And so here we're launching. Doesn't really improve the lag situation from the Super Heavy because we still have nine engines in each of the boosters and then five on the core. So it's not quite as bad as Super Heavy, but it's still pretty, pretty intense. Yep, up it goes very slowly. It is a grand rocket, but is it a good rocket? Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> anyway, here we have the end of the boosters. I did not reserve any for their eventual return. So yeah, we didn't put any grid fins or anything like that either. And then the Vulcane 2 engines, just four of them, as you can see, and they will complete orbit. They only have one ignition, so they can't help with the transfer at all. So that's one downside to them compared to say a J2 otherwise they are lighter and more efficient than a J2 so uh, though with a J2X they might be closer I think the J2X is more efficient but much heavier anyway there's the Attila thruster again it is a if you'd like it's sort of like if an ion engine had really good thrust but it is connected to a very heavy nuclear reactor so the power base is very heavy and we also have these radiators that we are using. We probably would need realistically much more radiator area than we have. Those are like special graphene radiators from KSV Interstellar so a little bit cheaty. Okay a lot cheaty but anyway we'll set that aside for now and we are getting our approach to Mars after much frustration and at least we are bringing some Kerbals back with the return vessel, so we're not supplying as many as we would have needed to. And in a bout of insanity inspired by some viewer or another, we, I started making this thing right at the end of the stream. Thankfully, I never launch it. So we can be thankful for that. And uh, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.